So what was I thinking by buying a Bentley that did not run? There could be anything wrong with this thing. I really liked the car, so I was really willing to take the risk. So I got this thing home, got it on the ground, put some brand new batteries in, tried to start this thing, and it just would not start. So I figured out there wasn't electrical damage at all. It was vandalism. Somebody put sugar in the gas tank. So I proceeded to clean the gas tank out as best as I could, added a brand new fuel filter, and decided to see if I could get this thing to actually start up and run. All right, so I had this thing running and I ran it for a little while and it shut off on me. So I figured that maybe the fuel filter clogged back up. Well, no, that wasn't the case. The right side fuel pump actually went out. I did test the fuel pump and it wasn't working. Check the relay, check the fuses, did a continuity test on the motor and it was actually burned up. Right now I'm gonna have to order me a new fuel pump and then we'll get it in and hopefully she'll be good to go. After waiting about five days, here's my new fuel pump. We'll go ahead and take out the old one and get this one in. So after about 45 minutes of laying on my back in the trunk trying to disconnect fuel lines and electrical connections, I finally got the pumps out. So here's the passenger side fuel pump that I pulled out. And if you can look down there real carefully, you can actually see a little bit of sugar in there. And I believe what happened was there was actually some sugar in these lines and it actually blew out. And it actually did get into the tank, so, so I did have to clean that out. Take a look at this sock that come off of this fuel pump. As you can see, there's some sugar on it. So what I did is I pulled the driver's side fuel pump, cleaned it very well, cleaned the tank on that side, siphoned out some more gas, and then I put some fresh gas back in there. So here's some of the gas that I got out of this fuel pump. Now before, we had that separation with the water, and obviously we still have that but actually if you look real close on the bottom here you see that that's actually sugar there now apparently that sugar must have been like I said in one of these lines and it blew all out in there but I got it out as you can see this is just some of it so I've had a couple questions about the sugar in the gas tank thing sugar does not dissolve in gasoline it will not dissolve. You can shake it. You can do whatever you want to do to it. It will not dissolve in gasoline. And I'll tell you another thing that I noticed. Brake parts cleaner will not dissolve sugar. So I'll show you here in a minute what I'm actually talking about. So sugar will not dissolve in gasoline or with this brake parts cleaner right here. Take a look at the sock filter. You can see the sugar there. Watch what happens when I spray it with the brake parts cleaner. It won't dissolve, it won't even move, not even with the gasoline. Same thing, if you try to wash it with gasoline, it just does the same thing. It wants to stay there, as you can see. But, as soon as you hit this with water, it's gone. Now, you do not want to put the water in the tank. That's not really the way to go, unless maybe you have the tank out of the car. So once I discovered sugar in the tank, again, after I pulled these pumps, what I decided to do, even though I would already put one on it, I decided to put a brand new fuel filter on it. Now this is a crucial part of these fuel systems. I don't believe any of the sugar got past the fuel filter, so I don't believe that's going to be a problem. So what I'm going to do is finish putting the pumps back in, put some fresh gasoline in, and we'll try to start this thing and see if it'll run any better. I did have a problem with the star battery running down on me, so I decided to buy a brand new battery so we wouldn't have any more problems. So we got our pumps back in, we got our fresh gas, now it's just time to put the key in and start it up and see how she runs.
she started off a little rough there, but now she's running a little smoother. Still seems like it might be missing on a couple cylinders. We might just have to drive this thing around and cycle some of this gas through it. So I've been trying to drive this thing and get some fuel through it, trying to get it to stop throwing misfire codes, but I guess that's just not going to happen. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pull some of the spark plugs out, take a look at them. Now I don't really want to get into replacing them because they're about $14 a piece and they are from the Bentley dealership. So I really don't want to go that route. I'm going to try to clean these things up. So let's take them out and take a look at them. So as you can see, you can only get to four spark plugs on each side without taking off the intake manifold. So if I have to remove the intake manifold, that's going to cost me an extra $100 for that gasket underneath there. And I don't really want to get into that just yet, so I'm just going to do these four on each side. Plug don't look that bad. Now look at that one. Now that spark plugs out of number 10 cylinder. That's wet. That's not good at all. Here are the coils and the spark plugs from cylinders 9, 10, 11, and 12. As you can see, they all look pretty good except for cylinder number 10. I believe the oil on the number 10 spark plug is from where the valve cover was leaking down into the spark plug hole. I don't believe that's going to be a problem. The other three look really good, so I'm going to clean these up and I'm going to put them back in. So now I'm going to start putting the spark plugs back in.
So I removed the spark plugs on the other side of the engine and it was the same case there. They all were clean, they all looked good. So I just cleaned them up a little bit and stuck them back in. I did make a video, but I didn't want to bore you again with all that work. I mean, come on, who hasn't seen somebody put in spark plugs before? Well, maybe not, at least in a Bentley, that is. So I've been driving this thing around and it's still running like a three-legged dog, even after I've already cleaned the spark plugs. I think we do still have some bad gas in there. I'm gonna try to bust a fuel filter loose and see if I can get some of that out of there. A couple of you have been wanting to know a few of the specs of this car. Now this is a six liter W12 engine. It's twin turbocharged. It has 550 horsepower. It has a six speed automatic transmission, paddle shift options, all wheel drive. So it gets up and goes. Now this thing is loaded up with a bunch of options. I can stand here and talk about it for probably another 10, 15 minutes on just all the factory doodads this thing has between the seats and the climate control and the automatic vent shade that comes up in the package tray in the rear. It's a 2006 Bentley. Of course, it's a higher end car. You're gonna expect all those extra doodads and stuff in there, all these luxury items. It actually has a Breeling clock on the dash, which is kind of cool. My favorite part of the interior besides all the leather. And what actually happens is when you put in the digital amount on the dash, the hands on the clock actually spin around and go to the time that you entered on the digital display. Now that's pretty cool. So if you haven't seen the first video on the Bentley, make sure you check that out. Also to stay updated on this project and my other projects, make sure you click the subscribe button below, click the bell, and you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram.